legendary hero who fought in Iraq, carried Princess Diana's coffin and was the Queen's personal footman, froze to death on the streets because we couldn't find him a bed for the night. Malcolm Livingston tried to get a night shelter twice, but he was just given a sleeping bag and a blanket and he was found dead in a churchyard from hypothermia. It was sub-zero temperatures that night. Malcolm was in the RAF, but unfortunately he struggled with PTSD, like so many people do. And eventually, again like so many veterans, turned to drink to cope. But before his turn for the worse, he'd been responsible for managing all the household staff at Buckingham Palace and was in charge of the monarch's travel arrangements for domestic and overseas tours. He is a man who fought for this country, who has been damaged by his service has continued to serve our late Queen, who carried Diana's coffin as she was repatriated, who kept our royals safe. And what happens? When he needed our help, he was tossed a sleeping bag and allowed to freeze to death outside. It actually makes me shake with rage. Malcolm is by no means the only veteran unable to access help, unable to get housing. There are thousands of homeless military veterans and thousands more who suffer from combat-related medical and mental illnesses. People will watch this now and they will say, I can hear them practically, oh, it shouldn't be a case of veterans or illegal migrants getting housing. Yeah, fine, I agree with you, it shouldn't be. But it's not my fault, is it, that the reality is people coming over here illegally apparently find it's a lot easier to get free bed and board in lovely hotels at the taxpayer's expense, backed up by a load of bleeding heart liberal lefties, than people who have given everything for this country. It's not my fault, I didn't do that, I wish it wasn't the case. I reckon there's a good chance that Malcolm would have been happy to spend the night at a hotel in central London, the same one that some asylum seekers camped outside in protest. I reckon he'd have been all right for a few nights on one of those barges that Rishi has made us all pay for, for people coming across the channel. It's shocking. Our priorities are all wrong. The money is there. The accommodation is clearly there. We know that because we're giving it to people. We're just not giving it to the right people. We should put homeless veterans first. Well, those are my views. Yes, those are my views. Uh, of course, you can get in touch now, gbviews at gbnews.com. I am joined now by former British Army soldier and veterans campaigner. It's Trevor Cole. Trevor, thank you very much. So, I'm very angry about, about this, Trevor, and I, I wanted to highlight this story. I've been wanting to for a couple of days, but the news agenda, obviously, has, has overtaken events somewhat, which I'm, I'm grateful for you to understand. But, uh, look, I mean, you've seen this story as well. What do you make of it? It's a travesty. First of all, I'm going to say thanks for having me on. Uh, it's always good to be on this channel. Um... I'm angry uh, that this has happened. Now, you've got to bear in mind that the, back in November 21, the government put out an emergency pandemic crisis where they wanted to get all rough sleepers off the street. Well, would not not have been the perfect time that when you got all rough sleepers off the street to find out if they were veterans or not? It would have been the perfect time to write down their army service number, where they served, and then we would be able to have a proper indication of how many homeless veterans we have. But we didn't. We ignored it. And the one thing that makes me angry is the fact that, believe it or not, Patrick, I'm sure all your viewers know, in England and Wales alone, there's 1,818 military veterans charities. Mm. In Scotland and Northern Ireland, there's 444. That's 2,200 odd charities. Mm. And what are they doing? They've got a billion pounds at any one time sitting in their accounts. But you mm. know what? The CEOs are too greedy. They've got their own agendas, their own expenses accounts, and the veterans normally come last. They really do. Unless you're Safa, who actually work extremely hard to get veterans off the street. Like, like anything, you raise a great point there, Trevor, which is it, it is not just the government when it comes to, to this, because, look, you know, there are charities out there that no doubt could probably be doing a, a little bit more. My main focus on this, and I make no excuses for this, is genuinely about that contrast between the way that we treat people who've just come over here on a dinghy and our veterans. And for people showing at their screens now or on Twitter later who go, well, it shouldn't just be an us or them thing. That's fine. I wish it wasn't. It's not my fault that it is. But it exposes the fact that we've got accommodation and we've got money and we've got a will and we've got a political group of people who are banging the drum for people who've just arrived in this country illegally as opposed to people like Malcolm who fall on hard times who are left to freeze to death in a churchyard. Patrick, do you know what? You raise a valid point. Now, I want to put this out there. I, I, I'm not too sure if I mentioned this before, but I wrote to my local MP, Theresa Coffey, a couple of years ago. 
And I said about utilising an empty military barracks for homeless veterans, which could get them off the street. We could bring in uh, veterans which cooked, which cleaned, which did, teach them trades, get mm. them back on to getting benefits and back out onto the street. And she forwarded my email on to Tobias Elwood, who's high up at the MOT and can do a lot of things. And Tobias Elwood's response to me, and I'm willing to send you the response, Patrick. I have it here. Tobias Elwood says, we cannot give these barracks to veterans. They do not belong to us. They belong to private investors. However, they were able to find, they seem to find these empty barracks for asylum seekers and, and all the rest of the scum that arrive on our shore. And they leave our veterans, they, they exploit and destroy our veterans. There's thousands of them out there still waiting in compensation. And the government are too heavy handed to help them out. It, it's a travesty. But could you talk to me a bit, and obviously we'll go to the advisor Elwood for confirmation on all of this, as we usually will, but could you just talk to me a little bit about the actual problem with veteran homelessness? Because I think a lot of veterans are too proud to admit that they've got an issue. There's a lot of sofa surfing out there. Tragically, with alongside some of the very natural mental health issues that can come with seeing the horrors of active service, then there can be self-medication in place as well, alcoholism, etc., which can be a thing, right? Uh, what, what, is yeah. the reality, what is the reality of... Of veteran homelessness. How much of a pressing issue is this? It's getting worse. And um, what's happening is uh, we have uh, lots of great uh, service personnel, regardless what service they're in. They come back from war, the ones that have seen trauma, and they're damaged. And it, it eats away at them. What you will not do, Patrick, if you have trauma, you will not share it with your wife or your children because the last thing you want to do is actually ruin their mind. You don't want to give that burden to the people you love the most. So what you do is you keep it in your head and it eats away at you over time, over time. You will try and reach out to other veterans. You do drink, you go out, you start drinking. Mm. Things start to change at home. You end up having no sex life. Oh, oh. Oh, that's a shame. We've lost Trevor, unfortunately. Well, well, he was painting the picture, of course, wasn't he, there, of what kind of happens to people who are just after, uh, just out from uh, active uh, service there. And, and, the, and the problems that can occur to them and how easy it is for veterans to fall onto hard times. And, and there should be a safety blanket there. There should be a safety net. But if you are just joining us, it is, of course, that horrific, horrendous story about former RAF uh, veteran Malcolm Livingston, who had had a distinguished career in the military. I believe Trevor is there. Trevor's back. We've got you, Trevor, I believe. Uh, sorry, yep. Trevor, just to say, so you were saying it's, it's easy for things to fall apart at home and then you end up homeless. Yes, Patrick. Well, if you come back from a war scenario and you are damaged, you do not want to share that burden of trauma with your wife, your loved ones around you, mm. and it eats away at you inside. When it eats away at you inside, your marriage starts to break away. You don't have the same connection anymore. You maybe get agitated when you go out, and things start to drift apart. And what happens to veterans whenever things start to drift apart? They would rather leave their married home leave everything for the wife and the kids, make sure they're happy, and they would rather sleep in the gutter than let anything ruin their family. And then there's no, and then then there's a struggle to get back from there, and it's 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 getting them before the veterans that are broken, like myself and many others. We need to have somewhere to go where we can actually reach out, and people understand. Um, I'm going to be honest, Patrick. There, there's very few veterans I speak to these days. Um, there's one or two that I speak to that are broken, uh, mm. that understand the pain I have mentally, and I understand their pain. And we meet up for coffees and we chat, but. It's very rare to meet up with a guy who hasn't been on the front line with you, who doesn't understand the trauma and the mental in your head. And it's difficult. It's very difficult, Patrick. Well, look, Trevor, thank you for coming on. Um, can I just say thank you for being so honest and so open? And I, I think really giving people, a, you know, a, a, real under, a real understanding. Because people like me, it's easy for me to sit here and talk a good game. I don't know what you've been through, really. I wasn't there. I never will be. And I'm very grateful that we've got people like you who go out and do the business for us. Uh, but you should be looked after more. And people like you, Trevor, should be looked after more. I just want to say thank you very much. And I'll chat to you soon. All right, take care of yourself.